Hi, Shannon. How are you? Long time no see. Well, I'm going to break the ice here, and I'm going to open up an old wound. Because I just feel like we have some words that are unspoken. And you know from my current Facebook posts that I said I was going to start releasing some thoughts and some of my own stresses, and that includes our past. So, I'm just going to clear the air here and throw out some thoughts. First, I'm going to say that I would be lying if I said that I hadn't been angry at you all these years. Maybe not so much as you, but just a few things. I just feel like there's some things that have kept us in limbo and... And I just want to clear the air and just get it out there so I can personally move on with my life and get it done and over with. All these years, I have waited and waited and waited for you to say something, but you never have. I've waited for you to say something, just anything, you know, just anything. But you never have, and you probably never will. So I'm going to open up an old wound and I'm going to clear that air. If not for you, for me. Because I think that I have finally come to accept that you're never going to say anything. And I have to face that. First, I'm going to say that I was upset with you the most over the thought that you just didn't trust me and that you didn't feel like you could come to me and talk to me about anything. I wanted us to be closer, but you know, I was just somebody who came in and out of your life. So of course, why would I be the person that you trusted? Because I was a person who, you know, just came in and out and went and it's, you know, I mean, I was just somebody who was thrown at you in the first place and said, here, take her with you. And you thought, probably thought, that I was just some annoying little sidekick. I mean, our personalities were completely different. You were very outgoing and you were a leader. And I was shy and quiet and a follower. That stemmed from me being through so many different schools and so many different times in my life. So, you know, I didn't have socializing skills. And the reason why I asked to go and stay there in the first place was to just get away from my annoying brother because my parents would not keep him away from me. And the only way to handle it was I had to take care of it myself. So, this was the, my only option as far as I was concerned. I was looking for stability. I was looking for, um, you know, you know, just somebody, anybody to care about me the way that my parents refused to. So, thus, I asked my dad if I could go and stay there. And he said yes. Francis said yes. And I understand that you had no choice but to deal with it. So here's this girl that comes into your life that you really could probably give two shits about, but you got to put up with her in the first place. So it's whatever. But regardless of the situation, I hoped that you and I could be friends. And it wasn't until after what happened that I realized that we really weren't friends because you didn't feel comfortable enough to talk to me about anything. So that explained a lot to me. But I have had a long, hard look at things lately with all this time off work because of my some medical stuff that I'm dealing with. And um, 
I've had a long time to think about some things and I do understand it a lot better after what now it's I guess it's been like 40 35 years or so um, since you know we were teenagers so you know I've been doing some thinking so anyways looking back on hindsight um, you know after the very first time when they she told us to bend over the chair and you had told me don't cry it only makes things worse I didn't really understand that comment at the time because to me all I knew was that I was being punished and I deserved it even though I wasn't used to having any physical discipline from my parents um, you know it just since you were so strong about everything um, it just kind of made it easier I guess to deal with it but on hindsight at the time I didn't realize and I didn't think about it and I should have been like well you know if she's saying this to me then it means it's not the first time that it's ever happened and so obviously there's something going on and then after having dealt with her anger and being timed and being dictated and controlled every time we went somewhere you know I just I wasn't used to having somebody care that much or or give two shits about anything I did so when she took on all of that dictatorship I mistook it as you know this person really cares about where my whereabouts are and you know I just mistook it for more than it was or less than it really was but the thing about it is is like I said you didn't talk to me or explain things to me and I just really wish that I had had more of a backstory to understand because Frances glamorized her friendship and her relationship with you and she made you out to appear to be the most perfect child ever and that it was all my fault. She said that you were the best child ever and that it was my fault because you had never acted out of character until I arrived. So she blamed me. And when she called me down that night and she was screaming and I took a look at her and I seen the bump on her forehead, on her head, and her holding the ice pack, I, um, I just stood there looking at her. I didn't know how to act. You didn't see tears in my eyes. You didn't see me. All I could do was think, where's Shannon? You know, where's Shannon at? Um, I just didn't understand it. And at the time, I was mad because you didn't trust me enough to tell me anything. But, you know, I understand now. Well, why would she tell me something? Because she knows that somebody's going to ask. And if, uh, if she did tell me about it, she knows that I would not go along with it. So... You did what you had to do based on what you had to get done, and I was just a bystander. And I hope that you can understand why I've been upset, you know, why I've had my thoughts processed in the way that they have. I just hope that you can understand. But, uh, you know... I do not regret the whole situation because in all actuality, I got something better out of the deal, which was I got to go to a new high school. I got to make new friends. I finally found uh, an environment where I was accepted. I finally had things to do, places to go, people to see, and independence. And after about six months, and then Frances got her therapy and everything else, 
she did come and see me at the foster home in Sandusky where I was at and she gave me the option of going back to live with her she said um, you know you can't date boys if you want to come back and I was thinking about it and I didn't tell her I just said no I'd rather stay here but she assumes it was because of the dating but it was just basically because I didn't want to go back and face her wrath I didn't want to deal with her temper all by myself you know so I mean looking back I get it now um, and it took me a long time a long time to to keep going over this over and over and over again in my head to try and understand it from your perspective because you know and I understand that you wanted to get back home and be with your family I get that I mean here's this family that's not yours and these this person is treating you like shit dictating you abusing you and all you wanted to do was get back to where you knew your real family was you know I get it but I just wanted and had hoped that you would have felt like you could trust me more than what you did but you didn't and that's because you couldn't tell me I get it now so anyways that is all I have to say about that I'm glad that everything worked out for you for the best in the end I'm glad you finally got to go home I thought that it wasn't going to be until you turned 18 but you know it all worked out for the best I just don't understand why you never asked me about it why didn't you ever ask me about that night is it because you didn't want to answer to it or you didn't want my questions coming at you I mean you didn't want you probably just didn't want me to know because you felt like it was none of my business but it's whatever but you know it's whatever I'm just glad that you're happy and you got to go on with your life and you know everything worked out for the best for you so thanks for teaching me about the things that you did teach me when we were teenagers um, you helped me do my hair you taught me how to do my hair and that has stuck with me obviously I got the same hairstyle going on so you know and I do remember you know we had a lot of fun at the beaches so I do appreciate all the times that we did have and you know I'm not angry anymore I just wish that you could say something to me just anything to finalize it other than I just want to go on with my life but you know it's it's whatever i'm at peace i'm fine with it take care